Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and uh, today I want to show you a little widget that I put together to sort of illustrate by interactive, you know, hands-on what a derivative is and how it really applies and how, what it really looks like to sort of visualize what a derivative is. So it's sort of a general thing. What I have here is a polynomial graphed here. This is the curvy graph, and the polynomial that we currently have graphed is listed right there. Now, if you want to watch this video, that's wonderful, but you can also download this, um, this interactive um, thing that I've created, this little program that I've created, and you can actually change the coefficients. So this guy changes the coefficient here, this one changes coefficient here, and this one changes coefficient here. So by sliding them around, you can sort of change the shape of the graph make it do different things. Now, uh, coefficient c, for instance, is the constant, so by moving that guy you can basically shift the graph up or down and you can sort of play with it and make it go different shapes and you can click these uh, zoom levels and zoom out and zoom in. So once you kind of get the shape that you just want to sort of explore or play with, I sort of like this one right here, then what I've also got plotted on the same graph is the tangent line at this point, this red point here on the curve. So a tangent line, as we discussed in the video, is really the line that comes and just barely touches the curve that you're interested in at exactly one spot. So it's always going to barely come and intersect and continue on. Of course, this graph disappears, so but the tangent line would continue on and it would only touch this polynomial in one spot and that's what the red dot is here. The slope of this tangent line, you see this is a, ver a fairly steep uh, line because fully vertical is the, is the maximum slope you can have of infinity. But So this guy is pretty close to vertical and the slope of this tangent line at this point, this red point here is 18.6. You know, and so what we're basically trying to show here is that as I go and move backwards here off, off the graph, then you can see that this tangent line gets steeper and the slope of it gets steeper and the slope of a tangent line as we as we discussed in the lesson is is exactly the definition of the derivative of this function so you take the derivative of this polynomial and in calculus we'll teach you how to do that and when you do that you'll arrive at a new function and if you evaluate the derivative at this point you're going to get the slope of this curve here the original curve at this point so I've sort of graphed that tangent line for you so you can sort of visualize now as you move this point uh, farther up the graph, you'll see that the tangent line begins to bend over because the, the curve is bending. And so the slope of this tangent line here, of this curve, is less than you know, the, the, uh, you know, the 20 or so that it was there. So the slope is decreasing and that's just because the curve is beginning to level off. Now once we get to the very top here, the tangent line to this curve, I can't get it exactly horizontal because of the little slider I have here, but more or less right here at exactly the top the slope will be zero which is um, what, what it's really showing you here the slope is very close to zero so where we have positive slope because the line is going this way and then we have zero slope right here where the the uh, function turns around and then as we go in the other direction the slope begins to turn negative and that is just because the tangent line here is pointed this way. So remember back to algebra. When a line is tilted this way, the slope is, is calculated to be positive, and any time a line is tilted this way, the slope is calculated to be negative. So there's no big surprise here that you're going to get a negative slope. It just means that the curve bended over, um, and so it's going in the other direction, so the tangent line is pointed the other way. So the slope is going to increase more and more and more, but in the negative sense as we continue going. Uh, and then eventually it's going to stop increasing and is going to go right back to zero again because the tangent to the line to this particular curve at this particular point is again zero. So if I could get it exactly lined up here, we would see that it was basically zero again. And then as I continue on in time, I'm going to switch over to the other side. The tangent line again becomes sloped in this direction, so the slope becomes positive. And as I go more and more and more, the slope gets larger and larger and larger. And that's because the tangent line is getting steeper. So at its most fundamental level, a derivative is defined to be the slope of a tangent line at a point. So this, this, uh, at this point here on the curve, the derivative of this polynomial is 18.9. That's just the slope of the tangent line. Now when you get into calculus, you'll take these polynomials and you'll learn how to calculate the derivative function, which will be a new polynomial, and that new polynomial will simply describe the slope of this curve at every point. So if we were to calculate the derivative and evaluate the derivative at this point, 
you know, at this x, y point here, we would get 18.9. And so that's what derivatives are for. Now, this is a great little tool to play around with and, and see how it's going to change as you change the function and just kind of get a feel for how it, how it moves. I encourage you to do that. What I want to do before we leave this is I want you to try to ground this in reality. I want you to pretend that this polynomial is not just a function of x, it's like a stale function from your book. I want you to pretend that it's a function of time and that this curve, this polynomial, represents the position of something. In other words, the distance uh, something is away from, let's, uh, let's say it's a car. So let's envision this y-axis to be a road and you're looking down from a helicopter and this is a road and there's a car parked down here you know, over here at negative, you know, negative, uh, down here, negative 10, let's say, meters. Because that's what the scale is down here, negative 10 meters. All right, and this car is pointing in this direction, and as time goes on, instead of f of x, let's pretend this is the time axis. So as time marches on, my position gets closer and closer to this guy here. Let's pretend we have a white painted stripe across my road, uh, like a starting line or something. So I start behind the starting line, and then my car goes like this and you can see that the car gets closer and closer to the white line and uh, eventually I'm going to go up here to the top where I'm going to actually stop the car put it in reverse and then come back closer to the white line again now in in real life if it were just a car you would start here and then you would go here and then you would turn around and go back down again which is right here and then you would turn around and zoom off again which is this part of the curve but because I'm plotting it as a function of time it sort of spreads that out so that as you march along this way you have to sort of imagine that the car is moving up and then back down and then going back up again so moving along to the point here if this is simply the position so maybe up here when I turned around the car was five meters in front of the white line Maybe when I turn back around to, to go forward again, when I switch the car around again, I'm at maybe four meters behind the line, so negative four meters. And then over here, I just zoom off and keep going. If this is a position curve, the derivative of the position, as we talked about in the video, is the velocity. That's how you go from meters to meters per second, because the derivative of position is velocity. That's something that's taught in calculus, and it's something that's true. So since I know that, if I look at the slope of this curve, which is the position at any point, I'm going to calculate the velocity. That's what it is. So at this point, way down here when I start the car, I have a very steep position curve. And the reason it's steep is because I'm moving pretty fast. That's the reason when you think about it, because the car must be traveling really quickly in order to cover this much ground in such a short amount of time. So my velocity must be pretty high over here, and that's why the slope is higher. So maybe I'm going 20.71 meters per second here, pretty high. As time goes on, I start to slow down because my slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative, is decreasing. So my speed is now 10 meters per second. Now, when I get all the way to the top up here, at the point that the car actually goes into reverse and starts to go in the opposite direction, coming back towards the white painted line, my velocity must be zero because at that moment I put it in reverse. I've actually very momentarily stopped. I'm not moving. And then I begin to go backwards. So here the slope of the tangent line is zero. Uh, you know, it shows up as close to zero here because this isn't exact, but it's going to be zero at this point, And that's because the slope of the tangent line is zero. And as I continue on into reverse, notice that the slope becomes negative. Don't get scared off by negative. That just means that instead of my velocity going in the positive direction, it's telling me that my velocity is now going in the negative direction. All it means is that I've just turned around. So I have a negative velocity, the slope is negative, compared to before. That's just because I've turned around. Now as I continue going, you see my velocity increases, but in the negative sense, because I'm going back this way, eventually I get back over here to where my velocity is zero again, because the slope is zero, the derivative of this position curve is zero, and then the slope turns positive, and that's because I'm again turned around and my velocity is pointing again in the positive direction. So my velocity increases larger and larger and larger and larger and larger until I just get off the screen. So that's a good overview and a little sort of interactive demo. You have any polynomial you can draw, you can draw the slope of the tangent line. That's the derivative at that point. If you can think about it in terms of a position function, then the derivative will be the velocity. Um, that's the most common use for talking about the usefulness of, of a derivative, and that's why I bring it up here. So download the uh, notebook, play around with it, change the curve around a little bit, you know, make it different shapes, uh, change the scale, check it out. 
and uh, get your hands uh, on it and you'll learn it and I think get a really intuitive understanding into the meaning of a derivative.